In this series of videos, we're going to be going over the multi-processing module or package in Python. And we're just going to be introducing the fundamental concepts of this module, a little bit about it, and why you might want to make use of it. So just very briefly as an introduction, multiprocessing, it's a package in Python that supports the ability to spawn processes that make use of a Python API. And this is really similar to the threading module, if you happen to have played with that before. If not, that's okay too. So multiprocessing is going to allow us to essentially write concurrent programs. And the way that it allows us to do this is it sidesteps something known as the global interpreter lock, or sometimes referred to as the GIL, G-I-L. And this is really an artifact of the way in which Python was initially designed. So when Python was being designed, they thought to include this global interpreter lock, which is a mechanism that essentially uh, assures that Python code is only going to execute one thread at a time. So this multiprocessing module is going to allow us to sidestep that and allow us to take advantage of the other processors on our machine. So before, if we just execute Python code, it just executes one thread at a time. We're not fully utilizing all the processors potentially on our machine. This multiprocessing module is going to allow us to do that. So that's the kind of the motivation as to why you might want to make use of this module. And we're going to see how we can actually go about doing that as well. So before we even get to talking about the multiprocessing module and seeing how it can be applied, we're just going to consider a very simple function and it's just going to be responsible for taking in a number and squaring that number and then printing the result out to the screen. And we're just going to run in our main program, part of the program, that function on a list of numbers. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take that idea, this application of the square function that we're going to write, and we're going to see how we can distribute each of the calls of that function across our different processors. It's the general gist of what we're going to do. So let's just go ahead and code up the square function, and we'll see kind of how that looks like, and we'll see what changes need to be made in order for us to do this. So let's go ahead and define a function called square. Let's say that it takes a number. And then what we're going to do is we're going to say result is equal to number times number. So we're just storing the square of the number in a variable called result. And then we're going to go ahead and print out to the screen, let's say the number, number squares to result. So a little bit about this formatted string or functional string, this uh, string here, if this is preceded with an F and then um, any of the content inside of this string within curly braces is actually evaluated within the print statement. So for instance, this number is a variable. We evaluate that expression inside this curly brace. So it'll actually print out the number itself. Likewise, it'll do the same for a result here. These types of strings are only supported, I think in Python 3.5 or 3.6 and beyond. So if you, are running an older version of Python, this uh, particular way of formatting the results is not going to work. So what you can do instead is you can say print, um, let's say the number, and then we can say concatenate the string of the number. So just kind of like how you would typically do this. Uh, let me just kind of finish writing this so you can see exactly what it looks like to concatenate the string of the result. So the reason I'm using the latter as opposed to the former is because it looks a little bit cleaner, it's a little bit more concise, and it's supported, so I might as well use it. So if you are running an older version of Python, just replace all of the print statements that I'll be using in this video with something of the form like this, where I'm converting the content to a string and printing it out. I'm just going to remove that for now, and uh, again, when we print out other content, just keep, keep aware of that. So that's all we really want to do in the square function. We're going to keep it pretty simple. And then we're going to go down to the main portion of the program. So I'll go ahead and say if underscore underscore name is equal equal uh, underscore underscore main. So this is going to be the main part of the program. And what we'll do here is we'll just let's create a list of numbers. So let's say one, two, three, four. We'll just keep it small for now. And then what we're going to do is we're going to loop through those numbers and then apply the square function to each one of those numbers in the list. So we'll say for number in numbers. Uh, we will say square number, right? So let's go ahead and write that. We're going to clear the terminal, and then I'm going to say Python multiprocessing introduction. And we can see that we run it, we get the appropriate output. So 1 squares to 1, 2 to 4, 3 to 9, 4 to 16. So that is that. We haven't done anything with multiprocessing as of yet, but we're going to see how we can actually take this and, again, apply this square function across different processors on our machine. So in order for us to do that, we're going to import a few things on the top here. And the things that we're going to import 
should already come standard with your Python installation. So if you have been able to run the code so far, you will have everything installed. You don't need to install any third party modules. So I'm going to say import OS, and then I'm also going to say from multiprocessing import, and I'm going to import two things. So process, this is a class that's going to allow us to create and run processes, and we'll see how that's used. And then I'm going to also import current process. And this is going to allow us to uh, access and take a look at the current process that's running on our machine. So let's see what we need to change in order to distribute this across our processors. So let's go down to this for loop. And what we're going to do in this for loop is we're actually going to instantiate a process. And then we're going to store each of the processes in a list. And then we're going to start each of those processes. So I'm going to go ahead actually over here and create a list, which I'm going to call processes. It's initially going to be an empty list. So as we loop through in this loop here, we're going to go through the numbers and then actually store each of the processes in a list. So let's actually create the processes in this loop here. So we'll say process is equal to upper score, uh, upper score, uppercase process. Jeez. Uh, so what we're going to do is pass in the target function. So the function that we actually want to distribute across our, our uh, processors. So in this case, that function is called square. And then the other argument that we're going to pass into this uh, class is something called args. And these are the parameters that this square function takes. So this is going to be taken as a tuple, and this is going to be number. So a little bit of an odd stylistic convention with this process class is that this second parameter here, args, if we're only feeding it one argument, uh, we're feeding it this tuple because it's between these parentheses, and then we feed it this one single argument, and then it's ended by this comma. It's kind of weird because if we were to have multiple uh, arguments. So for instance, if the square function was to have, let's say, number uh, and then just number one like that, if we were to feed in another argument to it, we, we could just do something like this, number one, and there wouldn't be a comma at the end. So for whatever reason, stylistically, it was chosen to have a comma at the end if the argument was uh, just a single argument. Don't exactly know why that is the case, but here we are. So anyway, we have a process object that we're creating from this process class that we're importing for multiprocessing, and we're specifying that the target that we wish to uh, distribute on our processes is this function square, and the arguments that we're passing to it are the uh, each of the numbers in the list as we process them. So I'm going to get rid of this call to square because we're not going to make use of it there. And then once we've created our process object, I'm going to add the process object to the list that we created up here. So I'm going to say, I'm going to say processes dot append process. So we're just creating a process object and then adding each of the processes to that list. And then the way in which we tell Python that we want to start the process is we just say process dot start. And so this is a built in method for any process object that's going to tell multiprocessing start the process that we've just created. So, so let's just go ahead and put in some comments above this just so we can have some context as to what is going on. So we're going to say processes are spawned uh, by creating a process object and then calling its start method. Start method. Okay, cool. So now we've got that. So now let's go ahead and go up to the square function. And what we're going to do is we're going to print out some of the uh, some of the information that corresponds to the process that we're running. So again, what we're doing here is we're looping through every one of the numbers, every one of the instances of the numbers that we're looping through has a process associated with it. And we just want to print out in our function, we want to print out associated information of that current process. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to use the OS module to print out the ID that's assigned to it by the operating system to see that each of these are indeed separate processes. So let's go up here after we define the result. Uh, let's go ahead and say, let's declare a variable which we'll call process ID. And there's a method uh, from OS which is called get PID. And this is going to allow us, as I mentioned, to get the process ID of the current process that is running on this call to the square function uh, assigned by the operating system. And it's just going to be a number. And we're just going to go ahead and print that number out to the screen. So I'm going to say print process ID and then process ID. And just to add a bit more context as well, I'll go ahead and add a comment. So we can use the, let's say the OS module in Python to print out, to print out the process ID assigned to the call of this function assigned by the operating system, assigned by the operating system. Okay, great. So we've got that. So now let's go ahead and write this and let's clear the terminal and then let's give it a run.
So notice that what we have here is we have some ID that the operating system is associating to the call of this square function. And then we're printing that out. And then we, we see the result of that. So this is just one squares to one, which is what we saw before. The next process ID here is just some other number. But notice that each of these calls, we happen to get lucky here, where each of these calls are being uh, executed in a sequential manner. That Notice that 54, 55, 56, 57, each of these process IDs are sequentially uh, processing each of the sequential elements of the list of numbers that we're processing. However, if I run this again, let's just see if I can run it again. Uh, still get one, two, three, four. Let's see if I run it again. So here, in this case here, we've gotten the two, one, three, four. So notice that the process IDs, 76, 75, 77, 78, the order in which each of those um, elements in the numbers list are being accessed and called to the square function are not necessarily in order. So the multiprocessing module is just going to create and spawn processes. And in this case, they might not necessarily be called in a sequential manner. Now, we're squaring a bunch of numbers in a list. So it's not like anything that we're doing from a prior calculation relies on a future one. So this is completely fine. And the order in which multiprocessing decides to distribute it to our processors is, is totally um, OK. However, there might be some instances where you have computations that are running that are reliant on previous computations. And we'll eventually see how to uh, ensure that previous computations are, are completed before future ones are to be uh, started. OK, so I'm going to go ahead and also clear the terminal there. So another way that we can refer to the uh, process ID is not by the number that is associated to it from the operating system, but there's a current process function that we also imported here. And that is uh, going to allow us to act on a process object and extract uh, a number that is associated to the process that we're running. So every time we call the square function, Essentially, the current process is going to assign a number from one to the total number of processes that we instantiate. And it's just going to assign a number to each one of those processes. So instead of getting like a random number that's given to you by the operating system, you've got some number that's labeled one to n, where n is the total number of processes that you're actually running. So let's go ahead and see how we can, we can do that. I'm just going to comment this out so we don't get double output. And I'm going to say uh, process, let's say process name is equal to current process. We're making use of what we imported, and then dot name. So every time we instantiate a process, which is what we're doing in the main for loop of the program, we're calling uh, a certain process. And then what we're doing here is we're saying, give me the name associated to that process uh, from, from the object that we're, we're making use of in this loop. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to print that out to the screen. So we're going to say process name. And then we're just going to say process underscore name. So again, just to add a bit more context so we can kind of separate what is happening here versus what is happening from the OS one, uh, we can also use the, let's say, current process function to get the name of the process object. So let me just clear the terminal. I think I already did that. And let's go ahead and run this and see what we get. So again, we get process labels. We get uh, the process name, process dash one, dash two, three, and four. Again, notice that they didn't necessarily come out in a sequential manner as mentioned earlier, uh, but each of the processes now have some number uh, associated to them or some name that's labeled from one to n. In this case, n is four because that is the total number of processes that we're instantiating. So that is pretty much it for this video. Uh, I think in future videos, what I'll do is I'll continue on with uh, further examples of how to make use of the multiprocessing module and also some of the other concepts that you will probably encounter if you continue to work with this module. So thanks again for watching. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section below. The code, as always, will be hosted on my GitHub and the link to that will be in the description. Uh, thanks again for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.